Good morning, Internet. Today we have an oxygen not included tutorial on a sour gas boiler that is easy to build in survival, compact, and produces more than enough power for even a large base. Works off of your one kilogram no phase change idea and counterflow heat system. It does require space materials. You are going to need thermium, super coolant, steel, all that kind of heat resistant stuff. You bring in petroleum or crude oil, regulate it down to one kilogram packets, flash it above 550 degrees to sour gas, cool it back down, produces enough natural gas to run 14 natural gas generators flat out. One of the benefits of this design is it actually produces excess heat. Hence I had to stick in a steam turbine up here to delete some of that excess heat. We'll go into a different design where I make better use of the excess. The way to build it, simple enough. Run ladders, have your dupes construct it. These radiant pipes need to be gold, copper, not aluminum. Aluminum might melt if your system gets a little screwy and the temperature gets up too high. These pipes down here need to be insulated. I kind of screwed up on this design. And so what happens when they are radiant at the bottom is you get packets of natural gas. The radiant pipe will cause this methane to flash. If enough natural gas gets up here and blocks these two tiles, it will starve the whole column. You have to turn off the oil, let the column condense out, wait for the sour gas to come back in, and away you go. Automation. This gas pump was just to suck everything down to a vacuum. So this automation just closes the doors once it's there. These are set to 560. To keep this hot enough, this is set down cold enough to keep the methane chill. Things to be concerned about as this system runs, if you aren't just letting your natural gas generators run nonstop, this room can build up enough pressure to block the liquid vents at 1,000 kilograms. So put in automation if the pressure gets too high. Tell your natural gas generators just to burn. Water-wise, 14 natural gas generators produce about one kilogram of polluted water. So that is enough to run this off of an oil well. One kilogram of polluted water can run one oil well at three kilograms of oil. This uses two kilograms. You can have oil or petroleum come in. Just happened on this mate. This base, I already had a volcano close by, so I got that running my petroleum boiling early. So I could just suck off excess petroleum to run this. Power-wise, I prefer natural gas generators. They're just easier to deal with carbon dioxide because it's already in a pipe. If you want to run slicksters, you can pump it down. This map, I'm just saying, screw it, dump it into space, don't need it. This map also happened to have a couple of hydrogen generator, hydrogen vents. So I've actually got excess hydrogen running liquid oxygen. Size wise, I make this about 20 tall. That seems to work quite well. Once you get it running, it runs very stably. To get it going, I've put space heaters underneath these diamond tiles in order to generate the extra chill to make the aqua tuner hotter to get the system going. You basically do it in batches where you turn on the liquid vent or the liquid valve, dump oil up here, turn it off, wait for it to flash, wait for it to condense, pump some more in until it gets stabilized. You just do one column. Once it gets enough, start the second column 
eventually you'll reach a point where it's nice and stable and you're generating extra heat. We're now going to switch over to a different map where I fixed the flashing issue and came up with a better use of the heat generated. Here we are in the doomed shelter with a much improved design. So the way I fixed the issues, down here is a liquid valve set to 975. There's a bug in the game where going from insulated pipe to radiant pipe with methane, even though it's only one kilogram packets because of the mini liquid pump, you'd still get some pipe breakage. By setting this to 975, 990, it keeps it below the one kilogram mark. The pipes don't break anymore. By having these be insulated, you're also no longer flashing the natural gas. Flashing the methane to natural gas, so the column stays perfect with sour gas. The excess heat is enough to run a petroleum boiler. So now I've got oil coming in, two kilograms, one on each side, runs the sour gas boiler, this liquid valve, and shut off runs over here. Automation is a bit more complicated. If this room gets hot enough, it enables the petroleum boiler. This controls the door for boiling that and keeping it from getting too hot. This buffer gate sends a pulse signal down to the shutoff because as this is warming up, you can't run it constantly. So once these conditions are met, it sends however many seconds of oil through, in this case I've got it set to 70, to run the oil. Once this gets hot enough, you can see we're up to 700 degrees in here, you can then, with an OR gate, just turn it on. Just have a switch, run it continuously, that gets the counterflow working great. On this particular design, in order to generate more heat out of the aqua tuner, I'm actually cooling this petroleum down with some regular pipes. There is no need to make your petroleum cool other than it causes this to use more heat, or causes this to produce more chill, which produces more heat, which then allows you to boil more oil. So in this case, I'm using seven kilograms total. Five over here for petroleum, one each for the sour gas, That'll run 14 and a half natural gas generators. Now in this setup, it is not water positive. 14 generators produces one kilogram of water. Seven kilograms of oil is two oil wells, which is two kilograms of water. So you need some extra water to keep it going. By this point, you've been to space. Odds are you have cool steam vents, polluted water, salt water, something else in your base producing the extra water. Again, to get the system started, you turn on one valve, let the counterflow start. Once it generates enough heat, you can rip out the space heaters that you put in down here. A tepidizer would work faster, but I just find them so annoying that it keeps freezing the water. You got to put super cooling down there and it's got to be one space. I find it easier just to toss four space heaters down here. That's enough to start the system going. Obviously you need oil, but it is a very stable design. It's compact. It's easy to build in survival. Once I did the math and figured that you can run, even with this extra cooling, you can run four kilograms of oil into petroleum. Four kilograms a second is more than enough to run even advanced cargo missions for space. You can run mini rockets off of four kilograms a second of petroleum. And that's the excess you're getting on top of 10,000 extra watts of power. Hope you enjoyed this design. Try it out. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Thank you.